Hi guys, welcome to the game week 25 double slash blank game week. So the deadline will be on Friday the 24th, um, 6.30 p.m. UK time. So make sure you've set your alarms. And there'll be four teams with a blank. Newcastle, Brentford, Manchester United and Brighton. And the four teams with a double will be Liverpool, Everton, Arsenal and Wolves. So first of all, I'm going to quickly review my game week 24 team and show you how I got on. And then I'm going to look ahead to my 25 bus team and then possible transfer scenarios. So let's jump into it. So I finished game week 24 on 52 points. I'm down 4,000 places to 851,000 in the world. It's a fourth red arrow in, in a row, but ultimately I'm not too downbeat. There's, there's a lot of opportunity coming up. I keep saying this, I'm going to stay positive and just keep playing my normal game. But there, there is a lot of double game weeks and blank game weeks come in. There's, there's free hits, bench boosts, wild cards to use. There's going to be opportunities to, to get a bit of luck here and there. Um, so I'm going to stay positive and yeah, just, just keep plugging away. Now, in terms of some mistakes that I made and maybe a bit of misfortune, I think the first one is moving De Gea out for Kepa. Um, I don't really need to go through that. It was, you know, it's a long-term transfer and it's cost me five points in game week 24, but hopefully I'll make that back up at, over the coming weeks. Another mistake I made was just moving um, Andreas to second sub and switching him with Botman. So Botman's auto subbed in. And that would have been the difference between a green arrow and a red arrow. That two points would have would have given me a green arrow. So uh, they're two mistakes, but you know they're, they're, it's easy with hindsight to, to um, make these observations. In terms of some bad luck, I think Odegaard missed an absolute sitter, so you know he could have could have had another five points. I think KDB had two big chances and created, uh, I think, an XGI XGI of zero point nine. So, you know, on another day, KDB gets a, a decent haul there. Um, Harland, you know, should have scored. I think his effective ownership was still around one hundred eighty percent, but it would have been a little bit of a boost in terms of rank. On the flip side, um, Martinelli getting a ninety eighth minute go after coming off the bench when there's only six minutes of added on time. Anyone that doesn't own Rashford, you know, his form at the moment is unbelievable. And if, and if you captained him, such a good call. It's such a brave call because obviously, as I said, Haaland's effective ownership was around 180%. So, you know, if, if that doesn't work out, you're taking a big hit. So, um, yeah, fair play. He's in unbelievable form and in, he's finishing at the moment. Is incredible. I think the goal that sticks out for me is the one against Arsenal from the edge of the area. Like he's just a player in form, in confidence, and he's just a genuine captaincy option now going forward with Haaland. Um, but with that said, you know, I am on another red arrow. It's four in a row. So I need to find a way to to start clawing back. My target still remains top 100,000. So uh, let's look ahead to game week 25. So this is my current setup for game week 25. So in theory, I've got 11 players, but I think the reality is it's probably more likely to be eight or nine. Um, Patterson, you know, I'd be very surprised if he got any minutes at all. Mitrovic, we don't know his current status. He obviously didn't play in game week 24, so it was um, a big enough injury to keep him out of that match. And then Carl Walker's played a lot of football recently and we've got Champions League coming up. So I, my gut feeling, I was prob I'll probably have nine players. Three doublers as it stands with the three Arsenal players. I would love to get one or two more doublers for game week 25. But I think, as, you, as you'll see when I go through my transfer scenarios, I'm mindful of blank game week 28 that's looming. However, I will add that as it stands with my team here, I'm not enjoying having three premiums. So Harry Kane, Erling Haaland and Kevin De Bruyne hasn't really worked for me. I've got too much money tied up in those players. And I think the biggest issue is that I've been unable to kind of tweak my team as I as I want. Each week I've found that I just don't have enough funds to get to players. You know, Mares as an example, um, probably game week 23 was a player that I wanted to bring in. I just couldn't afford him. Um, so yeah, I, I need to obviously attack the doubles, be mindful of the blanks and also restructure my team a bit because I'm just not happy with it. Now, these are my three transfer scenarios that I'm looking at. Please do drop a comment down if you've got any thoughts on this or you think I'm making a mistake. So I'm definitely open to suggestions here. But transfer option number one is Trent Alexander-Arnold and Gakpo in. And that will mean De Bruyne and Martinez exiting my team. 
Now, it might be surprising that this is my option number one, and this is what I'm favouring at the moment because it's not Salah. And I think the, the obvious move would be just KDB to Salah and Captain Salah and be done with it. Salah's ownership is quite low, so it, it could be a nice differential. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be flooding to get Salah into the team, so it, it'd probably be likely to 60%, 70%. But I need to maybe do things a little bit differently, given I'm at, at the kind of million mark at the moment. I think when I look at Trent, Liverpool have kept three clean sheets in four. And I think if we could have been, you know, if we'd seen some of that form earlier on in the season, we'd probably all blown Trent f for the duration, you know. If they can keep keep clean sheets, you know, attacking returns are going to come with Trent because he's that talented of a player going forward. I think the other thing that surprised me is that Gakpo is putting up an XGI of 0 0.69. So that's that's better than Salah's XGI, narrowly. But it just shows what a talented player he is and he's getting into positions to score goals. I'll counter that by saying that there's Champions League coming up, Jota's back, and obviously Gakpo's going to be a lot more at risk of rotation than Salah. So that's just a slight headache for me there. But I prefer Trent and Gakpo in my team over the other two options that I'll run through now. So transfer option number two is Salah and Tarkowski in, and it'll be the same two players exiting, De Bruyne and Martinez. So this has been my plan for a number of weeks. Part of me is thinking just stick to your initial plan. Salah looks in good form at the moment. He looks like he's, you know, he just looks more dangerous. Tarkowski's averaging, I think, eight points per game in the, in the last three matches under Daesh. It's the, it's the sensible transfer. If, if I was in, let's just say I was in the top 10K, I'm pretty certain this is the, the transfer I'll be making. But again, this locks me into free premiums. And looking ahead to game week 27, I don't think I can get Ivan Tony into my team without really ripping it up and trying to find another million from somewhere. So this is great for game week 25. It's not so great for 26, 27 and 28. Now, the transfer option number three, I'm, I think I'm very unlikely to actually go with this, but it's the, the moves that allow me to kind of correct the mistake of not having Saka in my team he looks brilliant at the moment and I would much prefer to have Saka in my team over Martinelli obviously there's a double here where you can guarantee that Saka's going to play 90 minutes in both matches and Arsenal have got a fixture in 28 so who knows where Martinelli is going to be rested as I said previously I'm still confident that he starts um, the next few games but there is going to be moments where Trossard does play and you don't have that risk with Saka. I also think Cunha could be a nice differential, 0 0.4. He's not actually got an attack and return yet, but I think he, it's only a matter of time. He's kind of getting 60, 65 minutes per match. It's definitely a differential. Um, you know, if, if that comes in, that could be a, a huge boost. You know, just say he gets 10, 12 points over that, those two games. Um, that could be a, a really nice return. But ultimately, transfer option number one is what I'm favouring at the moment. And transfer option two is, is only slightly behind that. So I think that's what I'm mulling over. So if you've got any thoughts on that, please do let me that know, as I said, down in the comments. So this is my transfer planner. So you might be shocked that someone that's 900,000 in the world or whatever I am goes into this much detail to pick their FPL two team. But it's the sad truth. I'm, I'm not doing very well this season. But it doesn't mean I'm not going to plan and I think this is the way that I can um, maybe get an advantage over some other players by just looking ahead to the to the doubles as well as the, the blank game week. So if I was to go Trent and Gakpo in game week 25, it would give me five doublers because I'm not counting Patterson. I would then bank a transfer in game week 26. And in 27, I could do something along the lines of Carl Walker and Mitrovic to Ivan Tony and Lewis Dunk. So that would be two doublers in game week 27. You know, you could arguably say you go for Matoma. Yeah, I can, I can look at how I move that around. But I have the funds to do those transfers quite easily. I think Tony becomes a standout captaincy option if you want to go against Haaland. And then looking ahead to game week 28, I'd have to get Dunk and Tony out of my team because they then blank. And I would probably bring in someone like Jao Felix or Ollie Watkins, depending on his form. And Dunk would probably become Tyrone Mings. I think Aston Villa have Bournemouth at home. So if you if you look down um, the final column where I've got a blue border, these are players that will definitely have a fixture in game week 28. 
So as it stands, and this is by making the transfers in game week 27 and 28, I could get to about seven players. Now, I think that's enough for me not to play a free hit or not to wild card. I think I can go into a game week with a guaranteed seven players. You know, if there's any risk or any injuries, I might have to revisit that. But I think seven's the number that I'm typically happy with. And I think a lot of other players will be in a similar position. Um, the players with a yellow border, that's a maybe. I think Liverpool-Fulham is dependent on Fulham beating... Um, sorry, that's the other way around. It's dependent on Leeds beating Fulham in the cup. So if that happens, then I'd also have Gakpo, Trent and Andreas with a fixture. So, you know, I'm, I'm on 10 then, I'm laughing. But I think if you just look at form at the moment, I'd probably fancy Fulham to edge that. So, yeah, th this is my current stance. And this is probably what's leading me to look at Trent and Gakpo because of what I can do in game week 27. Right, that's everything for the game week 25 team selection video. My biggest headache, as I said, is whether I go for Trent and Gakpo or I bring Salah in and captain him. Please do comment down below. I, you know, I appreciate any input. Um, but yeah, otherwise, that's, that's it for this week. If you have enjoyed it, please remember to like and subscribe. It's massively appreciated. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one.